to The Kingdom View. I am your host, Luann Toposki. Thanks for joining us. Come on, let's see what God has for us today. So thank you for all of you who stayed with us, stayed with, with us this day. It's been a long day. Are you feeling um, good about everything that you are hearing? Are you feeling good about it? Yes. Okay, good. Are you feeling invigorating? Invigorating? Very good. That's the whole point. We need to feel invigorated because it's a lot. It's right. It's a lot. But the Holy Spirit lives in you. And you came here. You chose to be here. You were saying yes to Jesus. And there's a reason why you're here. And so not only is it to understand everything that it is that we've talked about today, about the body, the soul, the, the mental um, capacity. I mean, it's very important to use our, our mind and our, um, our words because, and Glennis says this every once in a while, I love it when she says it, God never told us to renew our emotions. He said to renew our mind, right? We are to renew our mind in Christ. And so when we renew our mind in Christ, what happens? It helps to renew our emotions, that's neuroplasticity. That's actual science out there now. It's a real thing, right? Life and death is the power of our tongue. We really do that. And then not only that, but when we're speaking the word of the Lord, um, sometimes we get a download. And sometimes that's the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. I'm going to just wrap it up, maybe 20 minutes, and I'm going to get you out of here. But I really feel like the Lord wants me to share something with you. And so, first of all, I want to say, um, this is very interesting. So, the Lord wanted me to share with all of you, I'm going to just put my notes aside just a second, is that you're kings and priests, right? You're kings and priests. You have works to do. I have works to do. And, and at the end, when we go to heaven, we're going to be judged for our works. Did you know that? We need to know our authority in Christ. We need to be able to do some things just like somebody said. I'm not really sure who said it, but we're not here just to exist. We're here to do something, not just to go to heaven, but let's have a life. You know, Jesus came that we would have life and have it abundantly or to the full. Are we full? If we're not full, there's a problem. So we can get that taken care of. Emotional healing, mental healing, spiritual healing, deliverance. It's all available, and God wants you free so that you can be who he's created you to be. Revelation 1, 5, and 6 talks about Jesus. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests, to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. He made us kings and priests. Do you believe that? And, and, and Melchizedek, and I can't believe, I, I, I'm not sure, was it maybe Pastor Miriam? Someone had mentioned Melchizedek. Melchizedek is, is powerful. If you've not read that story, I know maybe it was Mandy, but, but Melchizedek is, was um, who Abraham gave a tithe to. Tithing is actually a, a spiritual principle. So we're talking about being in the kingdom of God here on earth. We can actually do that. And one very simple principle is tithing. Did you know that? In the order of Melchizedek came Jesus, and Jesus made us kings and priests because he shed his blood for us. We really do need to understand this principle. It's a very, very interesting um, thing to research in the Bible. And, you know, the Bible says to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's great to come to a church like this one. So it teaches the word. It teaches the scriptures that turn to me voice. Have you had a word of prophecy? Has the Lord spoken to you? What has he spoken to you? Are you believing it? Are you walking out on it? Are you doing it? Are you doing it? Because when you say, I receive it, and you walk out of it, it's like you're being like Mary and say, as you have said, let it be done unto me. That's, that's our attitude. That's what he's looking for. We have works to do. We have works to do. And he wants to do mighty works, and he can't do them if we stop. Like, what's the last assignment he gave you? Did he give you something to do? Did he ask you to call a friend, give someone a ride? 
um, go start this ministry. Go do, you know, what is it that he asked you to do? Did you do it? Obedience is better than sacrifice, as we know. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And we've had, heard this before, but I want to read it because the Lord reminded me of something that he wants me to share with you. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you, you shall condemn. You shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me. This is your inheritance right? Your inheritance, you condemn it. If anyone comes against you and says you're lazy, right? No, I'm not. I'm a child of God. I know how to pick up my stuff. You have to come against it. You come against it. Do you see the difference? If somebody's uh, speaking, you know, smack about, <laughs> smack about you, right? But you don't want to receive that. Oh, Luann, she can't talk about that. She gets tongue-tied when she does that. No, I'm a child of God. I can speak what the Lord wants me to speak. I can read what I, I need to read. I own it. I own it. You own it. You own it. It's very, very important that you understand this. No weapon formed against you will prosper, and you have to say something against it, right? You have to tell it to stop. You have to say, I'm a child of God. I can do this. I know how to read, and I don't have to be tongue-tied. Don't put that curse on me. Revelation 22:12 says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am telling you, he's got works for us to do according to our work. That's Revelation 22, 12. That's like almost at the end of the Bible. That's the 11th hour, right? Behold, pay attention. I am coming quickly and my reward is with me. We, he's got rewards for us, right? He's got rewards for us. He's going to give it to everyone according to his work. What are you doing? What are you doing? And your work is not the same as my work. Your work is not the same as pastors Miriam and Chris. Your work is not the same because we're all individually created. In the image of God, we're created in the image of God, and we have works to do. I am doing something, you're doing something, and when we all come together and work in unity, that's when the, that's when, um, the engine you know, really revs up and the tires are going faster, right? But if somebody's not doing their part, then the one wheel's off and you only got three wheels. It's important for us to do our work. You matter. You matter. What, what you do, what he's given you to do, you matter. I'm worthy. You have to say this to yourself. I am worthy. I matter. And you're going to be, um, you know, you're going to be given an award, reward according to your work. First Peter 2.9 says, you ladies and gentlemen, or excuse me, I'm not going to read that, sorry. Matthew 28, 18, 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has, given, has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe, teaching them to observe, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And what I want to tell you is all authority has given, been given to me in heaven and earth. And he's saying, you go. You go do it. That's the work, right? You go do it. What is the work he's telling you? He's saying, you go. You make disciples of all the nations. It doesn't matter who they are where they are, thank God for um, Zoom and for the internet, and I do say thank God for that, because sometimes the enemy can use these things, but so can God. You go do it. What's the assignments that he's giving you to do? It's so important to know all these things that you've been taught today, and now what are you going to do with it? You have to go, and you have to do your job. What's your job? We've all been given assignments. We've all been given assignments. What's the last assignment he gave you? Have you finished it? Do you still have work to do? Are you finalizing it? Ask the Lord, what do you say? 
what do you say? Give it to me, Lord. Romans 8, I want to talk about this because this is very important. We get tripped up sometimes. We have to realize that there's that now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. If Christ Jesus is living in you, and he is, I believe, and then there's no, therefore now no condemnation. Romans 8, 28, 30, through 30. And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he knew, for him, who he foreknew, he also predestined. Okay? He, we've been known before the foundation of the earth. We were known in our mother's womb. We were, we were fearfully and wonderfully made. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. See there? There it is. To be conformed by the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. See, many brethren. Like Mandy was saying, many brethren. He's the firstborn. We're, we're coming after him, right? We're coming after. We, it's very important that you understand this. For whom he foreknew, he foreknew you. He also predestined, he predestined you to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus, that he might be the firstborn among many. We are many. We're many. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. He called you. He called you. He called you. He called you. He called me. What's he calling you to do? Whom he called, he also justified. All right, we've all done something. He's justified you. Repent. Get it done with. Move on. Stop wallowing back here. You don't need to stay there. Just go. Go. Get out of those muddy waters and go. Put your robe of righteousness on and go. He's got works for you to do. He wants you to help disciple people all over the nations. Only he, he, he's got something for you to do. That only he wants you to do. But if you don't do it, guess what happens? He'll give that assignment to someone else. Do you think that maybe an assignment was given to someone else? That maybe it was for you to do? Have you ever received an assignment from someone? That it was given to someone else? I have. It's powerful. This stuff works. Moreover, whom he has predestined, these he has also called, whom he has called, these also he has justified, and whom he has justified, he also glorified. Glorified? You got works to do? He's got rewards for you. <laughs> and I'm telling you, they're going to be fancy, right? They're, they're, it's, I'm, I don't know if you've seen Bree's uh, beautiful crown, but I'm telling you, it's fancy. It's beautiful. He's got stuff for us, too. Each one of you. We need to believe. We need to believe we are all four. When we believe, we, all four of these were predestined. We're called, we're justified, and we're glorified. When we believe all four of these, right, when we believe it, we want to do the will of the, the Father. We want to. His will is our will. But we have to believe it. We really do. We can hear it. We can hear it. And we can hear it. And this is a great day. We heard a lot. Now we need to go um, take action, right? Take action. Because when we take action, just like we're praying, that's taking action. You hear it, you take action. He tells you to go do something in particular. Lord Jesus, give me something. Um, word of knowledge of something. He's saying for someone to go to the light. I mean, honestly, there might be something silly like that. You might, he says, go to the light, go to the cafeteria, go somewhere, go to uh, meet, you're going to meet someone, I want you to go to this destination. He's told me that before. He's literally told me that before. Go to this, um, it, was, it was actually a bar, and a band was playing, and he's like, I want you to give a message to someone, and I was like, I don't want to go there, and he's like, well, I want you to go there, and you know, you can't really argue with God, because honestly, it just bothers you. 
right? I finally get up and I go, and I'm like, I don't even know this person's going to even be there, but he was there, and it was a friend of mine from high school, and he was married to a good friend of mine, and and I saw that he was getting ready to leave, and he's like, yeah, I wasn't even going to be here tonight. I don't even know why I came. I go, well, I know why you came, because the Lord told me to give you a word. Stuff like that happens all the time. All you have to do is be obedient, be observing. Observe what it is that he's telling you to do. Observe the things around you. Take the time. Just calm down, take the time, and listen. It's very important. I am telling you it's very important. You know why? Because when you do these sorts of things, you pay attention. You pay attention and one of the things he wants me to tell you is that not only are we, we are not only are we kings and priests with works to do, but Holy Spirit is our is our um, is our partner. And a lot of people do not want to hear about this, don't want to talk about it. But I'm telling you what John 14:26 says, "But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring you." Bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. The Holy Spirit brings to remembrance. If you can't remember something, just like I just asked the Holy Spirit to bring me something, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, tell me something, Jesus. Tell me something that I need to tell these people. He will. He's my partner. See that? See what he did? Luke 24, 49 says, Behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry in the, in the city of Jerusalem until you are in, endued with power from on high. And that's exactly what the apostles did. They went. They went to Jerusalem. They stayed there until Pentecost came. And then what happened? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in tongues. We all know that wonderful, wonderful passage. Acts 2 uh, verses 38 through 39 says, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Peter said that. And why did he say that? Because they're no longer being baptized by water. They're being baptized by um, the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, when you repent and ask Jesus into your life, you receive the, the, the um, Holy Spirit. You receive him. It's just like that. It's just like that. It's just like that. You believe, you receive, right? And what comes with that? <laughs> For the promise is to you and your children and to all who are far off. Listen, 1 Corinthians 12, and I know we're running low on time, but I need to tell you this because the Lord told me to tell you this. <laughs> he doesn't want you to be ignorant about this stuff. And it says it, 1 Corinthians 1, 2 says, Concerning spiritual gifts, I do not want you to be ignorant. Hey, he doesn't want you to be ignorant. Gifts are gifts, right? These are presents. Presents. He's got these gifts. These gifts are for all of us. They're for all of us. He wants, them, wants us to use them. Now, do all of us use all of them? Probably not. I have. I've used them all. What be, really what it is is I allow him to work through me, right? I allow him to work through me. And sometimes it's a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, or perhaps even um, uh, um, discerning of spirits, because those are the revelation gifts. So I kind of categorize them to make it really simple. There are also power gifts, which are healing, miracles, and faith. Why is faith inc incorporated in my power gifts? It's because you need faith to hear him, lay hands on someone, and say, Lord, uh, we're praying for healing for this person, right? This is the Holy Spirit speaking. So the Holy Spirit is your, is your um, partner in all of this. And then we also have the spoken gifts, the prophecy, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues. We can all prophesy one by one, as 1 Corinthians 14.30 says. I am telling you, we have gifts. We need to study to show ourselves approved. We need to operate them. We need to say, yes, I receive them. Forbid not to speak in tongues. You know, for 1 Corinthians 14 says, I wish that you all speak in tongues, but rather that you prophesy for greater is he who prophesies than he that speaks in tongues unless he interprets so that the whole body can be, um, you know, encouraged. The gifts of the Spirit are for us to use so that others can be encouraged. A word of prophecy is for someone else to be encouraged. And they're for us. I think sometimes, and I can say this, 
you know, I went to seminary, and over 50 different Christian denominations were there. We don't all believe the same thing. Some believed in the gifts of the Spirit, some of the Holy Spirit. Some believed in only seven, not, the, not to inter, uh, speak in tongues and interpretation. But there were others who did, and we took it back to Scripture. We took it back to the Greek and the Hebrew, and we just loved it. It was like iron sharpening iron, and it was powerful. It was powerful. And what I'll tell you is that, yeah, we can speak in tongues. Yeah, we can do this. You have to ask. What do you want? If that's not a real desire in your heart or something like that, you know, don't worry about it. But if it's a desire in your heart, ask about it. When I was 18 years old, I heard about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I want to do that. I want to speak in tongues. I was looking around. I was studying. I was reading the Bible. I bought a concordance, for goodness sake. I was doing it. I was studying to show myself approved. And then some people thought I was, like, you know, kind of crazy in a cult because I was speaking in tongues because I was like, well, hey, don't you want to know about this? This is really cool. And they're like, no, 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 we don't want to do that. And that's okay because the point is here is what does he have for you? What does he have for you? What does he have for you? We're all different, and that's okay because someone else might be speaking the word of uh, wisdom, like, often. Like, you might see that operating in their life. And you might be, um, you know, prophesying to someone. That might be a gift that you use often. What I am telling you is that the Holy Spirit is telling, is, is telling us right here, right now, is that the, he wants to operate these gifts through you, all of you. You have to say yes and amen and ask him, Lord, which, which one do you want me to operate? Do you want me to operate all of them? What do you want me to do? He's going to tell you. And what I'm going to ask you to do in that moment is say, yes, Lord. I receive it. And then study it. Because the Holy Spirit is your partner when you go to do your works. And he does have works for you. And you're so much more powerful. It's so much more easier when you have the Holy Spirit working with you. Right? So much easier. And so... I, um, I am going to conclude with that. I wish I could share more, but maybe some other time I'll come back. But I'll tell you what, I've enjoyed so much being with you today. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here. And I would like to invite pastors um, Chris and Miriam to come up and just pray over us and bless us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please take everything that you receive today and use it. We will be sending out a PDF. You'll have access to all of our um, emails and um, websites and contacts because I know that the Holy Spirit spoke to some of you about certain things and others about others, but he spoke to you today. Right? Yeah. I mean, come on. This has been pretty exciting. And I'm not even, okay, I might be a little tired only because I haven't gotten a whole lot of rest. I mean, that whole thing with Glennis is like, you got to sleep. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, well, I'm kind of busy, you know, the Martha Mary thing. But you know what? It's all good because the Holy Spirit always shows up, and he showed up today. So thank you, Lord. All right. Just wanted to say real quick, if you all are still here tomorrow, we have service at 10 a.m. You are all invited. We love to worship. You know, God has done some powerful things in our midst, and we are believing that the best is yet to come for all of us, that we are stepping in to what he has ordained for us to do. Just like she said, now it's time to go out and do what he's called us to do and be about the Father's business. So we are just more than blessed by you and your team. Thank you so much. You yes. Amen. Amen. Would you all stand with me? So let's declare this together. I am equipped. I am equipped to do the work of the ministry. To do the work of the ministry. I'm equipped. I'm equipped in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Let me pray for you and we're going to sing. Father, we bless the people of God today. We thank you for each person that ministered from the platform. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your ministry to every heart individually yeah. and for gracing each person yes. with something today that is important for their future, their destiny, yes. and the assignment that you've given to them. So bless them and let this work be sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit yes. so that nothing is lost, nothing is wasted, nothing missing. But Lord, that there will be 
a sense in which the perfecting of the saints will have happened today in Jesus mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you for taking this. I ask you that you help me to not take that back and trust you even more. And so Jesus, we thank you for taking those. We thank you that you shed your blood for us. We thank you, Father God, that you love us so much that it doesn't matter what we have done in the past. You still love us. You still love us. And you still want us to be and do who you created us to be and do because we've got work to do. Ladies and gentlemen, we have work to do. We're called to be kings and priests, and he called you to do something specific for him. So let him have whatever you're holding. Lord, we give it to you. We ask you to forgive us for holding on to that. We give it to you now. We ask that you bless our lunch as we go to lunch. We ask that you intervene, help us to talk about the things you would have us talk about and nothing that you wouldn't. We ask you to bless the hands that, protect, that um, prepared our meal. And Lord, as we've been shared um, to this morning, watch our words, watch our thoughts. We give everything to you and we thank you for this time together. And especially with you, we ask that you continue to speak to us. He keeps telling me he wants to take everybody further, faster, and the only way you can do that is to deal with inside, what's going on, inner healing. He says he wants to take you further, faster. The way you can go faster is to deal with it. So this, this evening, this day, go ahead and just continue to deal with whatever he brings to your heart throughout the day. Lord, we just thank you for that, Lord. We ask you to bless this, this um, day, the rest of this day and this food, and our relationships. In Jesus' name, amen. If this message has blessed or inspired you in any way, and you would like to support The Kingdom View, go to thekingdomview.com and click on the donate button. All gifts are tax deductible. If this message has blessed or inspired you in any way and you would like to support The Kingdom View, go to thekingdomview.com and click on the donate button. All gifts are tax deductible.